Welcome to your material properties module on brick and stone for walling. This module will introduce you to various masonry walling materials used in construction of load-bearing walls. It will discuss various types of stone, brick and block work and introduce you to the standard sizing and myths of mortar construction. It will then discuss bonding patterns and implications for the structural stability of the building when using load-bearing walls. The associated reading starts with a series of walling materials beginning with stone. It discusses natural stone as an expensive material but now has been relegated mostly to a facing material. However, stone can still be used in construction and you should know the basic types of stone and how these are seasoned for use in building construction. Apart from natural stone, there is also a discussion on reconstituted stone, which is a more likely material to be used. Moving on to brick, we need to understand how brick is constructed, but also the basic proportions of the brick as it is used in construction globally. The size in the textbook relates to a European standard. The standard metric brick in Australia is slightly different and you should try and focus on the sizing for Australia, which is 230 millimeters by 110 millimeters by 76 millimeters. There are different type bricks made from different materials, whether they're clay or sand lime bricks, but they can also be done by hand or be machine made. So it is important to understand the different types of bricks, although you might not need to know all the details about these. In particular, the discussions on brick classification can be read through quite quickly without paying much attention. However, you do need to pay extra attention to two particular conditions that affect bricks. One which is frost resistance and the other which is efflorescence. Both of these are described in detail and an image provided for you to understand the implications of this for the building. Moving on to block work, you will see that Again, blocks like bricks can be made up of different materials and here the common one that is used is concrete. Within a concrete block there will be differences between the dense aggregate and light aggregate blocks which you should look through quickly and the variations for a clay block. Don't worry too much about the sizing given in the textbook because the nominal size for blocks in Australia, particularly for concrete blocks, is 400 millimeters by 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters. The particular value of a building block is that it is larger in size than a brick and therefore a bit more economical in the number of pieces used to cover the same amount of area. After a basic introduction to brick and block work, we now move to the actual construction of load bearing walls. For this, we will need a mortar, which is a mixture of sand, water and matrix that is uh, used to hold the pieces of the wall together. These can be classified in different ways, so you should try and understand the different materials that constitute the mortar, such as cement mortar or lime mortar, and the relationship of the different ratios in trying to achieve a particular level of strength within the mortar. The ratio will lead to an understanding of rich and weak mixes and the use of mortar plasticizers in trying to create an efficient mortar mixture. Also pay attention to the definition of the terms jointing and pointing, trying to understand the various range of processes used in jointing and pointing of bricks. Another important part of the section would be the bonding of bricks. Brick bonding is important in allowing for the load to be transferred properly across the different bricks without creating cracks in the wall. To understand the different bonding patterns, you will need to remember the different parts of the brick, such as the header or the stretcher. Based on how the header and stretcher are laid out, you can either get a header bond, a stretcher bond, or a combination known as a Flemish bond or an English bond you should be able to identify these. So look through the text as well as the diagrams closely. Once you understand the basic difference between an English and Flemish bond, 
you can then move on to more complex bonding systems. Here you can also look at the double Flemish bond and the double English bond and the use of queen closers and king closers in configurations like this. A more simplified form of this might be used in landscape as in an English garden wall or a Flemish garden wall bond. I've also included here a range of different types of breaks within the brick bat which lead to the development of the queen or king closer. Have a quick look at that as well as specialty bricks. You do not need to remember these but it is good to know the range of options that are available for big work. That is it for this module. See you in the next one. Thank you.